So, according to Politico, Bernie Sanders co-chair Nina Turner eyes Fudge's seat. Former Ohio State Senator and top Bernie Sanders surrogate co-chair. I don't like her calling surrogate. She's more than a surrogate, but y'all know I you know it's personal, but <laughs> she's definitely more than a surrogate. Um, but Bernie Sanders surrogate Nina Turner is contemplating a run for Representative Marsha Fudge's seat if Joe Biden brings the Ohio member of Congress into his administration, according to people close to Turner. I have encouraged her to run if the seat is open, as that is her congressional district, and she would have the immediate support of the National Bernie Movement, said Representative Rokana, a fellow former campaign co-chair. She'd be a fantastic ally for the movement in Congress. Reached by phone, Turner was coy. Currently, there is no vacancy in the district, and if it becomes vacant, thing, things will unfold as they should. Fudge has been boosted by Congressional Black Caucus. Yo, first of all, Nina is like on point with her interview response, like with her like uh, 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 on the spot interview responses. I feel like she should teach a class about that because she be just says the perfect response for everything. She should be like a, a PR manager for athlete, uh, probably for LeBron. Cause he don't, he be stepping in his own shit all the time. Anyway, Fudge has been <laughs> boosted by the Congressional Black Caucus for a cabinet role. On Tuesday, a close Biden ally and House Majority Whip Jim Clyburn told Morning, told Morning Joe that it may not be at agriculture, but she will be nominated. Excuse me, but she will be nominated to be in the cabinet. Um, Marsha Fudge must have played the game because what? I mean, it'd be. I'm, so like, basically what you're saying is, we don't even know what she's good at, but she gonna be in the cabinet. Believe that. How do you know? Who are you? I'm a player in the game. That's what I am. That's basically what Jim Clyburn is saying. Anyway, um, pressed on whether she was considering a run, Turner said, well, there's been an outcry for me to run, uh, to, excuse me, to at least consider it. You know, I'm a public servant through and through, but I'm just gonna leave it there for now. Now it says Turner 53, that's wrong. I told you yesterday, she's 29. I don't know where they got this from. You know what I'm saying? Like they just getting her age wrong and all that. Represent <laughs> she represented the Cleveland area as a state senator from 2008 until 2014 and served in on the Cleveland City Council before that. She had Wade running for the House seat in 2008 when it was last open, but ultimately decided to campaign for state Senate instead. Nina should run. Now, my question for you, should she run as a Democrat or should she run in the People's Party? So that's a really important question. Now, my thoughts, I don't care about party. Y'all know how I feel about that. I support the People's Party. I like the People's Party. I, I really like the People's Party, actually. I love their platform. Do not care if she runs in the people's party i would like her to be in the people's party eventually but i would prefer if she because nina has that unique clout in that district like tulsi has the unique clout in district two in hawaii if nina manages to win that seat after fudge is picked up and she locks that up so that nobody can touch her establishment or otherwise then it would be, in my opinion, more beneficial for her to switch to the People's Party while she has the clout of already being in Congress. Then, if she runs, because it's much more difficult to cheat at that point, because you can't tell me I went from being the most popular Congresswoman, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm went from getting, because if she, if she runs and gets like 85% of the vote or 80% of the vote or even 65% of the vote, that's like an insane margin. And then she runs again because you know how they try to do independence. Oh, well, actually she, um, you know, she only got 15% of the vote this time. That's not how it works. It, it, it will ring the alarm and y'all know how Nina Turnup is. Y'all know how Nina Turnup is. Y'all know it. <laughs> it ain't going down quietly, bro. It's not. The moment they stop Nina from speaking on the debate stage, or not the debate stage, my apologies, on, at the convention, she was supposed to introduce Bernie with Tulsi. They told Nina she couldn't do it. Not Tulsi, Nina. 
And not even 10 minutes later, Nina was on TV raising hell. Don't got no love lost with Democratic Party. Don't care about their image. Don't care what people think the Democratic Party's relationship is with black women. Put them on blast immediately. I believe that she should run as a Democrat because that's the obviously the best way for her to not get cheated at the moment. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but at least like it's the best way. I didn't say it was a great way. I just said it's the best way for her to actually have a chance to win. Because she wins that if she wins the primary, she effectively wins the district. Then switch. Do it. And Nina, in case you're watching right now, if you run for office, I'm going to Cleveland. I'm going to be like LeBron, bro. I'm going to Cleveland. Because I'm going to be knocking on some doors. I, I don't know what you need me to do, but I'm going there. And I really, really would encourage everybody to go. I mean, like, like that. Could, we, if we got a chance to, if we lost Tulsi because like she's just going on to bigger and better things, if we lose Tulsi but, and, and we get Nina, we ain't even lose nobody. We good. We straight. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, and it's important. It's, I cannot, once again, I cannot stress how important it is to have a black woman with experiences and, and, and uh, perspectives as unique as Nina's in Congress. Now, on the other side of that fence, I would also be interested to see um, if Bernie stays in the Senate for however much longer, and if Nina wins, how their views and advocacy and votes and legislature, like if Nina is in that thing, you doing what Nina does, probably just pushing out legislation. And once again, this is Nina. Nina doesn't have the vitriolic and uh, she has experienced the vitriolic rhetoric from the Rose Twitter world, from the Bernie movement, as Tulsi does. Because, you know, unfortunately, just the way that these fucking people are, um, because she was loyal to Bernie. Not that she doesn't have her own past that she had to overcome just like Tulsi did, what she described on, or what she talked about on her Drop the MIC podcast with Tulsi. But like, just because you're loyal to Bernie. And now that could be used strategically as an advantage because <laughs> for most of the Bernie Sanders movement, it's Nina over AOC. It's Nina, hell, sometimes it's Nina over Bernie. <laughs> it's Nina over Warren. It's Nina over Squad. It's Nina over everybody. The one thing no one ever questions about Nina are her principles. They don't say pretend like she's not fallible. They say they they don't okay, she made a mistake. Let's let's explain it to her and give her an opportunity to address it. And generally speaking, she ends up making up for it and, and coming through in the clutch. She she fixes it. So that that shit where the the Rose Twitter world likes to pretend like something didn't happen because Tulsi introduced it. If we switch out Tulsi in this specific case and replace it with Nina and still get the same stuff, oh, now all of a sudden, AOC, why aren't you supporting Nina? Well, hold up. Now that I think about it, you did never come to Nina's defense during the primary, did you? Now that I think about it, when have you ever said anything nice about Nina? Why aren't you friends with Nina? Why are you not supporting her legislation? Whenever you're experiencing racism or sexism, or vitriol from the right or from the democratic establishment you're always defending yourself you always defend ilan you always well not always <laughs> she'll defend ilan if aoc was simultaneously attacked at the same time but you get my point you have no problem defending cory booker and the establishment where were you at when nina was experiencing these racist ass attacks from people like dr johnson calling her a misfit black woman Mm. Nina's mere presence in Congress would expose so much people. It would expose so much that that alone would be worth her running and serving for the two years. And if she decided to run for president, <laughs> Y'all might not, I mean, y'all gonna see me on camera, but it is, uh, 
You just a simp for Nina. Yup. Yup. Sure am. And what? And what? And what? I don't care. Go ahead. Yeah, but you're just biased for Nina. You're damn right. Sure am. Mm -hmm. 100%. Now what? Where are we going? Where are we go from here? Let me go for you. You gonna come with me to campaign? Okay, sit your ass over there. I'm gonna campaign for Nina. I'm out. <laughs> we we out. We around this country, baby. <laughs> we worldwide. <laughs> okay. If she, it, 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 Nina's presence is just that powerful, and she just once again just has a very unique. She placed herself in a very. She strategically speaking, she placed herself in a very good position. I'll give her that. That that, in my opinion. Um, is like if if I gave gave her an edge over Tulsi just as a politician strategically, s staying where she stayed at. But even within the campaign, y'all y'all weren't catching it. She was she challenged Bernie in the campaign. She challenged Bernie on reparations on his stance on reparations in the campaign. She's like, oh, I don't I don't agree with the senator on that. We don't agree on everything, and I believe in rep I believe he should support reparations. He, she said, like, we can, you know, she didn't attack him or anything, but she was like, I don't agree with the senator on this thing. She challenged him there. Talked about election fraud within the campaign, but because they only saw the, you know, the, the crowd in Mass A only saw the speeches, the fire, oh, Bernie, 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 Bernie speeches. That's what they're focused on. They see the loyalty to the guy that they, the white guy that they love so much. They don't, they don't recognize just how much of a dissenter of the establishment of all types of the establishment, all parts of the establishment that Nina Turner truly is. And so, and that's, and that's largely due to, I don't know if she did it on purpose, but I'm just saying like, that's largely due to strategically placing herself in a position. Uh, and to be honest, like based on principle, she's like, I'm not gonna pretend like I do, like, like these motherfuckers did. They pretended like they loved Tulsi in 2016 and we don't, you know, we don't care. She has a past, but like, so do we all. Da, da, da. Then the moment that it became, that she became inconvenient for Bernie, then it was, or and AOC, to be frank, it was a problem. Fast forward, Nina was obviously loyal to Bernie in 2016, and then, you know, took a different path, stayed with, with uh, Bernie Sanders. But because of that, she still gets all the love from Bernie's people, but Tulsi's my sister. Uh, every time somebody, every single time the establishment tried to pull, you know, push one of those bullshit narratives about Tulsi, Nina was one of the very, very first to defend her. Every single time. Came on my show and defended Tulsi. Obviously had Tulsi on her show. Girl, almost in tears, they had such a damn nice reunion. And once again, it's really good when you can be principled and strategic, and that is a very, very rare quality uh, in our, in, in, in uh, leftist populist politics, for real. There's not a lot of good strategists. Most of these people are not good strategists, and Nina is a different breed. So, Nina, run for office. I'm OTW, auntie. Just let me know. <laughs>